basics, of course, it's going to lead to right. it. Yeah, of course. So we, I hear a lot about this high value man and high value women and all these things online. Yeah. You know, and the high value man is someone who's making over six figures uh-huh. and over six feet tall and whatever like, it is. Like Mr. House over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but what is it that men can do to become more high value than just their financial abundance and their height? How can they be a high value man, whether they have money or they have height or mm-hmm. any of that stuff? Have complete and utter self control. And what I mean by that is you try and control your mind, body, and soul in a way that would lead to positive long-term outcomes for you as a man. If you get to the gym and you eat right, your long-term body will appreciate that. If you save your money, you don't waste it on alcohol and clubs and this, that, and the other, your long-term self who will be able to invest in uh, net, uh, so I was going to say Netflix, not Netflix, NFTs and all that, ah, whatever, yeah. whatever it is that businesses, your long-term self will appreciate that. If you're able to dedicate some time to some spirituality or something to disconnect from this world, your long-term anxiety will appreciate mm. that. So a man who has complete and utter self-control and makes responsible decisions that serve him in the long run is truly high value. Somebody who can resist short-term desires and short-term temptations for long-term goals, who can shake a man like that? Right. A man who can resist having sex with every single woman because he doesn't want to get the wrong woman pregnant. Who can res- who could shake a man like that? Whereas a man with no self control, the you know any woman can distract him, any money can distract him, any opportunity can distract him. He is malleable. That does you can't be high valuable, high value and malleable at the same time. So it's having an identity that's constructed on self control that will make you high value. It doesn't matter how tall you are, how short you are, how rich you are, how broke you are. If you've got no self control. You're a weak man, unfortunately. It's very difficult to have self-control. But if they can master it, they're incredible. So what I'm hearing you say is women should really be looking for that quality and the partner they're choosing. Self-control. Not, okay, he's tall, dark, and handsome, or whatever it is these days. And I guess women are more into like the skinny, like artistic guy, whatever. It's whatever always it like is. changing, it's right? Like but he's a certain look. And he's got a certain amount of money. He's a high value man. If he hasn't got self-control, he's a liability to you and your children. Yeah, and you have to remember that. So, what maybe- happens when you get in a relationship with a man who, on paper, looks like they have everything? Mm-hmm. Great career. They've got money. They've got the car. They got the house. They're put together, dressed well, groomed, perfect height. You know, all these different things. Great friends. Great network. But they lack self control. What will happen down the line? Relationship, marriage, kids. Unfortunately, what that might look like is if you lack self-control, it might look like um, indulging with other women. It might look like um, gambling your money away. It might look like eating and consuming the wrong kind of drugs or whatever it is. A lack of self-control will lead a, to a, a man down a path where he will no longer be able to recognize himself. Wow. Whereas self-control, he has a consistent identity from the day he's born until the day he dies because he dictates his future. Even if he wants to have a day of no control, it was his choice. It right. was genuinely his choice. If it's one or two days where he wants to get drunk and he wants, it's it. But he's not. He's not subject to the environment or to people and to everybody else. He's, he's not just, influenced by his surroundings. He's influenced by his what his long term goals are. And if he's got like tomorrow, I don't have to start early. I'm going to get drunk today, or you know what, I'm single. I'm just going to you know today. I'm just going to do what I want to do. No, I'm not judging that because it's an element of self control. But when it's like, oh my god, I'm so stressed. I need to watch pornography. Or, oh my god, I'm so this. Unfortunately, that man is self-destructive and you can't have children with self-destructive men, unfortunately. Similarly with having women. Uh, right. I don't mean it's just for men. You, you sure. cannot have children with people who are self-destructive because it's contagious and it will then go on to the children and so on and so forth. And so many people forget this when they're selecting partners. Yeah, I mean, and I want to get to the women's side here, like what, the, what a high-value woman mm-hmm. is and should be yeah. defined by... Um, but you really can't change your partner that yeah. much. No, you, absolutely you, not. Once someone has chosen, this is my identity, this, is, this is who I am, they have to be the ones to say, I want to improve, grow, transform, heal, change, but not you're not going to be able to influence them over and over to be exactly what you want. Yeah. So if you, try, if you think I'm going to get married to this person, then I'm going to control them. It's going to be, they're going to be miserable when yeah. you're controlling them and trying to change them. Absolutely. And also you've shown them that you accept their unacceptable behavior. So they can't change and respect you. 
So let's say, for example, I choose a man who's a compulsive gambler. I've already chosen him. He already knows I have low boundaries. Wow. So I've, he, I've already shown him I accept the unacceptable. So say if tomorrow he became a really great guy, I, he's not going to want me. He's going to outgrow this woman with no boundaries who accepts the unacceptable. Women think he's going to be like, oh, I'm so grateful to my ride or die. He's really going to be like, I've outgrown this person, as he should. Because wow. he shouldn't be with a woman that accepts the unacceptable because she's not incompatible with the new him. Sim same thing with men and women. She might feel like inferior as he's transforming and growing if she's not willing to do it together with him. Yeah, absolutely. Like. There was no boundaries. Wow. And, yeah, and we, as it, like, we, it's like when you have a manager at work that lets you come in late, lets you, you know, drink on the job, lets you take days off. If one day they stamp the authority, you're going to be like, mm, I'm not listening to you. Right. But um, when you decide to be better at your job, you're going to want a new workplace because you want better manager, you want better structure. So same thing happens in all human connections, uh, unfortunately. Absolutely. You yeah. got to create that standard and stick You've to it. You got to stick to it, unfortunately. So it seems to me that, and correct me if I'm wrong, that in today's society, a, a high value woman is someone who is beautiful, attractive, has a you know young body yeah. and gets lots of attention from men online. It seems yeah. to me like a desirable, high value woman is perceived that mm -hmm. in today. Correct me if I'm wrong. Absolutely, I would agree. What do you think men should be looking at as what a high value woman is? I think um, what they classify as a high value woman is actually truly a narcissistic woman. And what they should be looking at is a woman who has intrinsic rather than extrinsic values. Wow. And what I mean by that is when you select a woman who enjo enjoys um, explosive kind of attention from men, you're selecting a woman who will never be satisfied with you. Oh, man. <laughs> Unfortunately. Wow. And you're selecting a woman who relies on external validation for self-esteem. And that will never go in that woman. What you really should be looking at is a woman who has intrinsic values. And now these are things like how connected I am to my friends and family. How much do I serve my community? How much can I look after you and your well-being? How much self-esteem do I derive from having a purpose and loving those around me? Unfortunately, they look at what is packaged the best way. And that woman is, uh, unfortunately, she's unattainable because she's emotionally broken. To require that much validation can't be healthy. And I say this as a woman who's online myself, but no, I, people could very much argue the same for me. But one thing I noticed is if I look at my DMs, they're endless. And I don't show skin. I don't show body. It's not that kind of content. So I think, and it annoys me. I'll see it and I'll just quickly, you know, this is nonsense. Um, so imagine being a woman who only per posts ex things that cr uh, create external validation. At least I'll get a few messages saying, I love your content, blah, blah. But you're just posting your body. You're just getting, I love your tits. I love your boobs. I love this is a woman who wants that. Why would you, why on earth would you think that woman is now going to be able to serve you and your family and your children in a, a wholesome manner? She's not, she's not equipped for it. But again... I'm assuming that people might be commenting or saying, well, this is, you know, don't, don't diminish my self-expression. Uh -huh. This makes me feel great. I can do what I want. I want to express myself. I want to post bikini photos all day long. Absolutely. So I'm allowed to do whatever I want yeah. and I like it. I like expressing myself. I'm a, you know, so I am. Uh -huh. Don't tell me what to do. All these different things. So, you know, what do you say express to someone that might be way. feeling that way? Express Express away, but don't expect that woman to be wholesome. She can express however she wants. I could sit there and express myself through nudes and bikini pictures, etc. But then don't put wholesome traditional values. Assi don't assign them to me because I'm not signing them to myself. So if she's expressing her that herself that way, you as a man, how dare you expect her to have these complete opposite values? Right. Yeah. So just accept her for who she is. She's not wrong. I'm not actually saying she's wrong, by the way. I actually don't think there's anything wrong in that, but have a realistic expectation of what that woman's going to bring to your life. In terms of a relationship. In terms of a relationship, yeah. Right. She, she's somebody who craves knowing that she's still sexually attractive to other men because the, that's what the audience will be. Women don't follow women who just post stuff like that. So that's what um, her audience is, it's that woman. So why would you try and create, like, why would you force her, why would you try and get her to contort into your values and your what you want out of her? She's going to be more promiscuous. She's going to be more unfaithful, but that's okay. 
So, so, but the problem is you either accept her for who she is or you go somewhere else, but don't expect that woman to have the values that you want them to have. You've been coaching uh, people for a while now. Yeah. And you said there are what? What are the main themes you see that people struggle with the most in your your one-on-one or online coaching? I would find that the main thing for men is the addiction to pornography. Yeah. How many men are addicted to pornography today? I I would say that unfortunately in the younger generation, here's the problem with the, the addiction to pornography. When I have a man on the phone to me and he's got, and this is irrelevant whether he's handsome, not handsome, whatever, in shape, not shape, but he's having struggles with women. He's having some problem with women. They're either transactional, using him, cheating on him, whatever it is. I don't ask any question other than, are you addicted to pornography? That's the first question. They'll come to me on the phone and say, "This my, uh, my girlfriend's doing this. I don't know how to get over. First question I ask is, are you addicted to pornography? Because there's a masochism in there, in there that they don't realize. And they'll say, no, 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 I'm not addicted to pornography. I watch it maybe twice a week, three times a week, whatever. But I don't, to, I don't know if that's healthy. I don't think there's any level that's healthy. And what pornography does, unfortunately, what pornography does to men is it allows them intense gratification without the fear of rejection. And what men need is reje- a rejection in order to build their bravery and redirect them. If I'm really overweight or if I'm not making a lot of money, I'm living in my mom's basement and I go out into the dating world, I realize women don't find that attractive. So I redirect myself. I am. You have to improve. You have to overcome. You have to let go. You have to. And learn from the feedback. And have courage to take consistent action and build self-control. Exactly. But what pornography allows me to do is maintain that state whilst getting the gratification I want. And the other thing it does to men is it blurs their true value. So they will see these beautiful women online go into the real world and say if he's a four out of ten, he should be aiming for a four out of ten woman. But he'll think, I, I, I don't want that girl. I'm not attracted to this girl. And they'll be aiming for the 12 out of tens and they can only access them through escorts or through, uh, I mean, in America, they call it passport bros. Have you heard of that concept? Passport what? Where they go to like maybe the Philippines or they go to other countries uh-huh. and marry women and, you know, oh, wow. yeah, it's kind of like a nine to date. Then they try and do it that way instead wow. to access those type of women because they've been so addicted to pornography. They've got a skewed perception of what their true value is and what their true match is. What do you think pornography is doing to the male brain chemically? Um, It's making them incapable of connection, both physically and emotionally. Physically, they have erectile dysfunction, and I'm talking to 28-year-old boys that will have uh, erectile dysfunction and they can't perform. And emotionally, a porn doesn't model intimacy. It actually models how to make hate with a woman, not how to make love. So they learn how to spit on women, they learn how to degrade women, they know how to make fun of minorities, they learn all of these things, and they think they're learning all these skills. But when you speak to women, they'll say the least satisfying uh, sexual encounters with a man that's addicted to porn, because he's reenacting and not reading her body. He's not learning He's not intuitive. He's not not connected. Not at all. He's not there in the moment. So not only is he doing all these moves that she's not connecting with, (laughs) but he then can't even lift his because wow. there's there's an erectile dysfunction so imagine the experience from a woman's end she's just like this is the worst experience i've ever had he is also realizing okay she's not enjoying this let me just stick to porn because i'm terrible at sex so that rejection and that encounter is so negative that they go de- deeper into the rabbit hole unfortunately and can i just say pornography is not good for women either i think the rise in bisexuality in women is predominantly from exposure to porn yeah, I think so. I don't think it's... How many women are watching porn from not, people you talk to or coaching or yeah, just... Not as much, but when I what, I what I find really difficult about pornography and really disempowering is the majority of the time that women are watching it, they're doing it for their partner's pleasure, very limited for their own. So they're watching girl on girl and they're watching things on that and they're engaging on that behavior primarily from a male gaze, for male attention, for men to be fine and satisfying rather than their own thing, because women tend to be more emotionally connected to sex. So if they're engaging in a lot of pornography, it's for um, male desires. So they're almost catering to the male gaze in a way that's helping them lose their own identity. They're signing up for degradation. They're signing up for confused sexual identity. They're signing up for a society that only caters to male sexual gratification. So I find it more bizarre that women watch porn. Do you think, why do men watch more porn than women? Um, because I think for men, it's the ability to access any type of woman without the fear of rejection 
and men are more likely to be rejected when they go and seek sex in the real world. Yeah, and so I think it's just the bypassing rejection is what they're doing far more than women. Why are women not into porn as much though? Why do they want to watch it? Because without an intimate connection, porn is, uh, sex is limited in how gratifying it can be. Yeah, it's almost like having a cake without sugar. Like without the ingredient of intimacy, it's just a bunch of empty calories and it's not worth the taste. So that's what porn is like for women without actually caring about somebody. And sometimes they'll watch it, but they're still trying to learn how to please their partner through it. So there's an element of my partner, my partner, my partner. Uh, Whereas for men, it's just to bypass the rejection that they don't want to face. Wow. Yeah, unfortunately. And it is a coping mechanism for a lot of people, yeah. Yeah, it's like drugs, alcohol, food, pornography. But the thing is, it's so easy for me to be judgmental, but I didn't grow up where the smartphone had access to pornography. I don't know what kind of person I would have been. And I also have a religious kind of reason to avoid porn. So I'm not saying this to be holier than thou. I'm very aware that if I was in a different circumstance, I'd be just as addicted but it's so bad for us. It's so, so bad for couples and intimacy and everything. It's so terrible. And it's something that's almost just accepted. What I find so shocking is if I was to watch a child be abused and get joy out of that, I would be arrested, rightly so. But cut to 20 years when that child is now engaging in voluntary sex work, which is usually most sex offended children go on to do sex work, is accepted. Voluntary. Voluntary. Because what happens when a child's been abused, they often try and regain control by engaging in sex work. Wow. It's their way of reestablishing control and boundaries that were ripped off them. So they're thinking, now I'll monetize it and take some control. So usually most people who work in the sex industry have a history of child abuse, sexual abuse. So I just think watching vulnerable people kind of um, re-traumatize themselves and getting joy out of that should be somewhat more spoken about rather than just seeing Absolutely. it as, a, as an industry. It's not Absolutely. an industry that is created on like, you know, movies where it's people who went through a school and tried, it's usually people who went through trauma have now found themselves in working in porn and we're okay to just watch it all day, every day. It's scary, right? What would you say 